It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce Mr. William Bradford Huey, noted author and analyst, and editor-in-chief of the Longines Chronoscope, and Mr. Hardy Burke, noted author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Ari L. Kubovi, former Israeli minister to Czechoslovakia and Poland. Dr. Kubovi, our viewers tonight are very much interested, sir, in what's going on in the Russian satellite countries as regards the Jews, and you with your long experience to satellite nations, in satellite nations, are peculiarly well qualified to give us uh, that information. Uh, you were ambassador to Czechoslovakia, and I believe after you had left there, the Russian government, in effect, asked the Israeli government not to send you back. Now, sir, specifically, when did you leave Czechoslovakia? I left Czechoslovakia November the 28th, the day after the end of the Slansky trial. That's uh, just two months ago. Two months. And, sir, how long had you been there before you left? Well, I first want to state that I was minister to Czechoslovakia and Poland, and I spent there 17 months. And so you were there 17 months. You were there during the Prague trial. That's right. You observed the rise of, of anti-Semitism and uh, now you have been away from Czechoslovakia just two months. That's right. Uh, now, doctor, is there a pronounced rise of anti-Semitism uh, as you saw it there? Uh, well, uh, there is no doubt that the Slansky trial was an expression of anti-Semitism. I see, sir. Now, can you tell us something, sir, as to the extent of anti-Semitism in Czechoslovakia, specifically are the Jews living, are they afraid, the Jews who are now in Czechoslovakia, do they live in terror? I would say that since uh, the, the arrest of Slansky and the purge of Jewish officials, which was followed uh, by an ouster of a number of Jews uh, from their economic positions, uh, the Jews have the definite impression that this is a regime directed against them. That's Jews as Jews, Jews. not Jews as political figures. Not at all, not at all. Is Jews there any such. difference between what's going on in Poland and Czechoslovakia? The Polish regime has shown more stability as far as its composition is concerned than the Czechoslovak regime. I mean, as far as uh, its uh, ruling uh, class is concerned, but there has remained in Poland, among the Polish population, a very deep-seated anti-Semitism. And uh, those Jews who remained in Poland, remained because they could not emigrate in time to Israel, uh, feel that uh, they are in a very dangerous situation. Doctor, why do, uh, if there is this anti-Semitic feeling there, in Poland, why do they want to keep the Jewish people in Poland? Why don't they let them leave if they don't like them? I mean, if that's the idea. You know that uh, the Soviet Union, as well as all the satellite countries, are in principle opposed to emigration. And uh, they permitted the emigration of Jews for a certain period, immediately following the war, while there was uh, still a feeling of guilt uh, still the feeling that the Jews, after what had happened during the war, the terrible extermination during the war, were entitled to, in, to um, rebuild their lives in a home of their own. Well, uh, sir, Doctor, do you see any comparison between the uh, Hitler's persecution of uh, the Jews and what Stalin is doing today? Is there any comparison there? I would um, say that anti-Semitism is always a mean, an instrument for certain bigger purposes. And in this respect, I would say there is some identity between 
all kinds of anti-Semitism. Well, some see. similarity. And the Jews are being made a scapegoat again. Made a scapegoat. I see. Well, the important thing that you've said now, sir, <coughs> is that you are not, as an <coughs> observer of this situation, you make a difference between what's going on in various satellite nations. You don't apply a general statement to what's going on there, sir. Is that correct? I would, <coughs> I would say that uh, the recent developments make us very anxious because if uh, one could uh, be of the opinion that the Prague trial uh, was destined for Czechoslovak purposes in order to find a scapegoat uh, for the economic difficulties of Czechoslovakia, uh, to give the people an explanation why uh, from the very high standard of living they have known after war, their standard of living now is so low. After what we have seen in Eastern Germany, and after uh, the, the, that indictment of the physicians in Moscow, we have every um, reason to be very anxious and uh, to see there the symptom of a uh, general development. Pursuing this question a little follow, uh, further that Mr. Huey raised, Doctor, uh, you mentioned a difference of degree in the treatment of the Jewish people in Czechoslovakia and in Poland. Now, to your knowledge, is that difference also uh, a difference of degree in the Soviet Union itself? I mean, in, within Russia itself? <laughs> or would you have any knowledge of that? That difference of degree? Again, I would not like to speak uh, of the past, because uh, um, the, the fate of the Jews in the Soviet Union has passed through a great, uh, great uh, number of phases. What I would like to state is that we are witness now of a very, very disturbing development. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, now, <coughs> can you explain to our viewers why this is happening? Uh, your understanding of Soviet techniques. Is this, uh, number one, is it aimed, at, we've heard that it's uh, a tactic uh, for the Middle East, that it uh, is a tactic by which the Soviet Union hopes to uh, attract support among the Arabs. Would you say that that's one of the reasons why this is being done? Well, I would like to distinguish between uh, various reasons. And I would like you to understand that uh, a trial, like the Prague trial, is not destined to administer <coughs> justice. It has a great number of purposes. It's a, it's a tactic, It's isn't a it? tactic, it's a method, it's a method to achieve political purposes, it's also a method to indoctrinate the masses as well as the leaders. Now, let us take a few purposes. Uh, the Prague trial, for instance, um, was uh, had uh, one of the purposes of the Prague trial was to convince the Czechoslovak people that their present leaders are real Czechs and real Slovaks, they are real patriots. Now this is a general line which we will develop in all the satellite countries because it's very important to convince the population that their governments are real national governments. Um, of course there are uh, wider implications, there are more general purposes, and I would say, as far as the Soviet Union is concerned, that there is no doubt that this method is destined uh, to win the friendship of those, are the, of those who are, who may be, the enemies of Israel and of, and of the Jewish people. In view of all of this, Doctor, why is it that uh, the government of Israel, realizing that there is this great wave of anti-Jewish uh, propaganda and cinema that's been set up behind the Iron Curtain, why is it that do they continue to recognize the Soviet Union? Well, I do not see any purpose in um, withdrawing uh, our representations uh, from the various countries. Uh, Israel is not the only country which uh, has been the object of very violent attacks and if I may say... You're referring to the United States of America. I have seen the treatment, of, for instance, uh, of American diplomats. Uh, and uh, I am sure uh, it, I, have, I have considered it an act of courage on the part of the American diplomats uh, to maintain their contacts and their connections in order uh, to serve a higher purpose. 
Well, now, sir, our viewers will be particularly interested in what uh, Israel as a state expects to do about this latest development. Now, sir, do you think that it'll be Israeli policy to try to bring as many of these people to Israel as possible? There is no doubt that this will be our policy. Um, if the Soviet Union and if uh, uh, the, uh, the satellite countries uh, could assert in the past that their, their Jews didn't want to emigrate, that after all uh, they, uh, they were uh, uh, citizens with full rights, and now uh, that uh, the Jews are, un are under such attacks, I think that we are entitled to tell them, let our people go. We are willing to accept these cosmopolitans. We are willing to accept these so-called Zionists. And this, this means that uh, certainly many, many more Jews, if you, if you are successful in this, mm -hmm. many, many more Jews will be brought into Israel itself. Yes, this is our intention. This is our determination. Well, sir, that uh, comes down to money and that there have been uh, several efforts to sell Israeli bonds in the United States. Now, are you in the United States in connection with that bond, with the bond drive? I am in connection with this drive because we have to strengthen Israel economically in order to permit it to absorb the many immigrants which we want to, whom we want to bring to Israel. And that can only be done with outside economic aid? Only, or let us say mainly. Well, I'm sure that our viewers have appreciated these expressions of yours, sir, and thank you for being with us. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burnt. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Ari El Kubovi, former Israeli minister to Czechoslovakia and Poland. Longines is a superior watch in every respect. In fact, one of the finest watches made anywhere in the world, and yet Longines is in a class by itself. For Longines is the world's most honored watch. Thus, amongst the finest of the world's watches, Longines watches alone have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals at World's Fairs and international expositions. And in the competitive accuracy trials organized by great government observatories, the brilliant record of Longines over the years is a surpassing achievement. The world's most honored watch, Longines, makes the world's most honored gift for an anniversary, a birthday, or as a sincere token of affection on any important occasion. The pride with which every Longines owner regards his watch is something we've all observed. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches. History repeated, and you are there, Sundays on the CBS television network.